is the 110th episode of Cloud Folks Weekly for the second week of October 2012. This episode is titled, Pardon Me? Cloud Focus Weekly is sponsored by Arcus, your cloud community experts. And I'm your host, Jason Atwood. Joining me for the 110th time, the co-host of Cloud Focus Weekly, Justin Elsie. Justin, how are you doing today? Awesome. Feels like we haven't done a podcast in a long time, but I feel like it's only been a week, right? It's only been a week, but this is Friday. Sometimes we just have to kick it to a Friday. Sometimes it's a Friday afternoon smackdown. You know, things happen during the week. Work. Work. <laughs> <laughs> Our clients are like, do work. Don't do podcasts. So we're like, okay. <laughs> Stop podcasting. Fix my stuff. Almost said not stuff. No, no, no. No fixing. Oh. Make better. Break unbreak winter thirteen for me. Oh, see how dig. we're gonna we're gonna cover winter thirteen next week. Okay, uh, all right. Well, we do have speaking of agenda, we have one today. Uh, we have the blog post of the week, which we will talk about, uh, and then we have two pieces of news: uh, a purchase, a sort of conglomerate purchase, which is interesting, an exact target, and then uh, we have a letter, a letter. F- from uh, got a letter from the government. No, a letter from uh, Oracle sent to a Ford employee uh, that about Salesforce is kind of interesting. And then we'll do our cover book as I pick of the week. But first, I want to say that if you are a winner of the Cloud Focus Dreamforce giveaway, um, you should be getting <laughs> the what? <laughs> the Dreamforce Cloud Focus Weekly Dreamforce it's giveaway. A lot of words. Yeah, it is. Uh, you should be getting your iPod Nano, and we know they're getting them because we're getting the tweets. We're getting tweets. We're getting thank yous from yeah. Daryl DeVoe. We're, we'll just throw them out. These are public. They're, well, tweeting, they're tweeting at us. Right? And uh, and Ronald Reed have both received theirs, so they've at least they've at least gotten theirs. Great. So thanks for listening. Thanks for joining the contest. Hope you enjoy your, your Nano. Yes, absolutely. All right, so let's get to the blog post of the week. Um, which was titled uh, Keeping the Momentum Post Dreamforce. Wow. Good. Keep and, it. Keep it going. And that's enough. No. Uh, yeah, so was, this week uh, it was up to the partner who shall not be named. We have a lot of things that shall not be named. Uh, we don't like naming them. Okay. Uh, we, we're, you know, we're not he's... secretive or anything. And if you were at Dreamforce, came to the booth, you know who we're talking about. Yeah. That's true. Um, but anyway, he wrote a blog, po- a blog post. Um, he is a big fan of T-Rob, is what we call him in the Arcus offices, of uh, Tony Robbins. Um, and so we thought, well, what better than sort of the make a Tony Robbins slash Dreamforce uh, sort of wrap-up, you know, blog post. And his, his really sort of encapsulates both bringing in the Tony Robbins piece of it and also sort of like, well, how do you keep – how do you bring conference momentum going? How do you, you know, if there's you, there's so much stuff that comes out of conferences, how do you keep that stuff going without letting it fall by the wayside? So um, that's that's the blog post. Um, Did you go to the Tony Robbins session? Uh, I was on a plane. You actually, a I plane. was I was. You were landed, or I actually I was asleep in Fort Lauderdale. I took the red eye out of San Francisco to Fort Lauderdale. I checked in my hotel at eight thirty in the morning. And I went to sleep because I hadn't had to sleep all night. So I went to sleep and slept for like three hours. So while you were T-robbing. I was there. You, yes. That was nice of them to let you check in that early. <laughs> it was. I just realized. Big, big shout really out nice. to the Weston Diplomat Hotel in Fort Lauderdale. They Cal- might be listening. Florida. I, uh, so I went to the Tony Robbins session. Yeah. What was your, since we're talking about T-rob, what was your feelings? Um, I don't want to offend anybody who's a <laughs> t- Tony Robbins follower or, or enjoys Tony Robbins. Yeah. So let me say this. I I enjoyed – so I was only there for a little over an hour, and I understand okay. the session went for about three. Okay. So right there you kind of know where I stand. I, I only could be there for a little over an hour. And I and because you had other things to do. No. Because you just left. I just left. Oh, okay. And it wasn't for anything that he was saying. I was actually quite enjoying the words that were coming out of Tony Robbins' mouth. It was the it, way that he was saying them was really, really just not it, – it wasn't getting me. Like, it, it was evangelical. I felt like I was sitting in church. Right. And I didn't want to feel that way. And he was making you get up in the call and response and yell at your person standing next to you and jump around and dance. And that's just not me. Right. So – 
it wasn't for me. I wish I could have just talked to him one on one for right. like twenty minutes. I, you can. Do you, you have, have ten, do you have ten million dollars? Twenty grand. Yeah, oh, uh, well, it's more than twenty grand for ten yeah. minutes of his time. Really, one on one with Tony Robbins. Yeah. Ten minutes. What I've heard is that you cannot get one on one Tony Robbins until you jump through many many hoops. Meaning you have to go and meet with lots of people before you even get to the chance to talk wow. to him. It's not like you can just be like, hey, you mean his minions. Well, it's his program, and you know, it's part of his philosophy. Again, I'm sort of. I, the 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 person who showed me name is a big fan, and I so I've heard a lot of his theories. I've listened to some of his tape, uh, CDs, tapes, whatever, digital files. Um, you know, I I'm a big self help, productivity, love this stuff. Um, but I too, if I were there, I would say that type of stuff usually turns me off. I mean, not the call and response. Oh, call and response, fine. You know, hey, you guys out there? Yeah, we're here. You guys have a great time? Yeah. But the um, but yeah, getting up, making me feel sort of like, oh, I'm hugging some total sweaty stranger or, you know, like the dancing around the head. That stuff's usually, I mean, what's meant to do is get you out of your, your shell and sort of start thinking differently, which I appreciate. Sometimes that can be effective. Sometimes, you know, it's. Yeah, you know. I, I, I get what he's doing. It just wasn't working for me. But anyway, the blog post is for those who, you know, got some juice, got some energy at Dreamforce felt the momentum teetering your way right and you want to actually put some of those keep the wheels moving right put some of those plans into into action uh and applying some of tony robbins principles and applying some other principles uh how you might go about doing that so head on over to blog.arcusync.com and read the newest post called keeping the momentum post dreamforce Excellent. Which I think will be our last Dreamforce blog post. <laughs> I think Although I was, there's one more thrown in there that we will throw up. Um, don't throw up. I won't throw up, I promise. Uh, we will put up the all of the sessions that all of the Arcus employees spoke at right. at Dreamforce yes. on the blog. Um, we They're now up on YouTube. We've aggregated them, put them into one blog post. They'll be there so that you guys can go and, uh, and check listen out. to us. And listen and see the slides. Yeah, I know. I sent it to some to someone the other day, and they were like, "I can't see you." I'm like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. It's That's funny because the they used. I feel like they used to do video. No, I, they never did. I feel like I've seen a video, a YouTube video of me speaking at Dreamforce. I have not. Really, it's always been just always. Oh, okay. Actually, it used to be even. I think it used to be even worse, where you didn't even get the slides, where it was just like the title slide i feel like because i used to shoot from the back i'm shaking my head now uh, i've been to more dream forces than you um why would they have done that before <laughs> and not now because they can't scale because shooting video of three five hundred sessions versus 50 sessions they did a good job by the way getting them up they're all up right and it's only you know a month later and there's like 700 videos up there it's pretty yep. good speaking of pretty good things that's a sagui for you. Uh, a little news in the thing. Actually, at the wires this morning, uh, Exact Target, makers of uh, of marketing automation tools, purchases or buys Pardo. I want to say Pardot. Me too. But it's not. We Pardot. just call it Pardot. All right. Exact Torgo- Tarjot. <laughs> Tarjay. <laughs> Tarjay buys Pardot for uh, ninety five point five million dollars, and I go digital for twenty one million. And the reason why this caught my eye. Because we've implemented Exact Target a few times. Yes, we for, have. Well, we haven't really implemented Exact Target. We've implemented Exact Target's integration with Salesforce right. for a right. few of our clients. And right. Exact Target, we've always felt, is on the higher tier. It's certainly um, the most expensive. I don't think it's the most expensive. Oh, I mean, from the ones that we usually deal with, like the the ones that I rattle off, people say, what are the ones that integrate with Salesforce very well? We usually say, like, Vertical Response, Exact Target, Constant Contact. I'm even hearing MailChimp more and more, I think. Yeah, um, I think they just built a little integration. Okay. People love MailChimp, and for a while they did not have an integration. Right. But now I think they do. But anyway, Exact Target, um, you know, I always think of them as a as a pretty top tier mass m- email marketing tool and they and it just struck my eye because I was like, "Oh, they bought Pardo, but Pardo's the one that always has the really big booth at dreamforce right <laughs> exact target has the really small booth at dreamforce that's a little weird 
Like, <laughs> like I didn't know that Exact Target could buy Pardo. Right. You know, what? to me, on the surface, not really knowing a whole lot about each company as an individual companies, I would have thought Pardo was the bigger one because right. they're the one with the bigger presence at Dreamforce, and that's really how I know them. I don't know them from anywhere else. Right. Exact Target, I actually know because we have clients who've used Exact Target. I actually worked at a place prior to Arcus that used Exact Target and implemented it there. So I've known them for, for a little while. I find it interesting that, you know, they, that they were the ones who bought Pardo. And, um, and anyway, it's just another example of some of these big marketing automation tools or marketing tools being purchased. They right. rattle off. This is an article on TechCrunch that we're, we're, that we're looking at or referencing. You know, they, they include companies like Radian 6 that has been purchased as part of Salesforce and Aprimo and Cheetah Mail, part of, a, part of Experian Group, right? Um, and also Buddy Media. So, you know, they, they, they actually, in this article, and I find it interesting, they say it puts Exact Target into a position. Uh, into a better position against the likes of Salesforce, right. which I don't necessarily understand. No, I mean, I, it, because if you're talking about marketing automation, Salesforce is moving out with the purchase of Buddy Media and Radiant X and the others. I mean, there's 10 others that we can't even name, but there's a ton else out there. You know, the marketing automation is one of the things they're moving into. Human resource, capital management type of stuff is one, and then this marketing automation. You know, it's interesting because there's always like again I, I make this comparison all the time there's the what you see at Dreamforce and then the what I talk to my clients about and in talking to someone a prospect the other day about marketing automation I was like oh and they're like oh what can Salesforce do and I said you know Salesforce can do this this and this it kind of can do it it can do it well um, but it hasn't sort of changed in the five six seven I mean uh, you know I don't remember back in 2001 when it, what it was doing but it hasn't really changed in fact I I think the, the capabilities, I mean, the capabilities of mass email and, and, campaigns. and campaigns has campaign not campaign members has not really changed in a long time. Campaign members got a facelift like three years ago, right? Two years ago, but other than that, I mean, it's not like the limits you know, when you go to the, the same. yeah, it's not like when you go to the booth on the expo floor and you're like, hey, Silver Pop, show me what you can do, and it's like drag and drop flows of if they open. But don't click a link, then send them another email two days later. If they click this link, then send them this email four days later. Like, right. really set up big time marketing right. campaigns that are fully automated. Drip campaigns, yeah. stuff like that. And right. have the data flow back into Salesforce. I think that's their strategy. These tools do this really well. We'll just integrate with them or provide them the ability, the ability to integrate with us in right. a really good way. Mm. So I don't really understand how this puts pits exact target against Salesforce outside of just the area of maybe the social aspect. Well, that's that's clear. Is that marketing automation in terms of email is 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 right. sort of one thing, and I think it's sort of a you know everybody's done that. It's it's pennies on the dollar, but the whole social stuff and social response and monitoring and page management on Facebook and all that stuff is sort of where the gold is now. Or the oil, or whatever reference you want to have about digging into soil and grabbing back stuff that wasn't there before. Uh, I, th I feel like that's where everybody's going. So that's sort of you know. So Exact Target, very well, very known for their email marketing stuff, is now saying, "Oh, look, we can get into this other world." Yeah. And so I think landing pages is also a big one. Like for Salesforce, Salesforce dot com sales marketing automation. It's like. You know, their answer to landing pages isn't very good. Sites. Site force or web to lead or yeah. something. It's not a very dynamic experience. It's funny because it used to be better with the tracking of the Google Google Analytics or the Google yeah, the Google Analytics integration and uh, or AdSense integration. Right. Which you could actually go from directly from a ad word on a you know, on a Google search right straight through right into into your lead and then track it all the way from the lead all the way to the opportunity and close one, you could tie that code right, which clients usually get very excited about. Very few actually did it, but they get very excited about it. Um, you could tie that code right back it. right back to the dollar that you, you know, spent on yeah. that click that you spent on. So it's kind of, that was kinda of interesting. Yeah, their um, ties with Google have 
have sort of fallen apart. Yeah, I feel like they're both just going in different directions, and and I think and they're going to be competing against each other in places. Yeah, but all companies compete each other in some places. Yeah. Whether do you play together? My my worry would be if you're looking for, looking forward, like the Gmail integration, you know, which is something that people really like and is very easy to install and very easy to get going, um, like literally a click of a button. Would that be yeah, something? It's not that really could, a integration so much. Well. It is. It installs a Gmail button inside your Salesforce, and when you click it, it does send you over to Gmail and includes your email to email to Salesforce, Earl, and the yeah. BCC. It's, I mean, it's not fully integrated. Clearly, it's but it's it's good enough that I think people using the web feel like it's integrated. Oh, I'm on a link. I click it. It does it, and then it stores back in Salesforce without any effort. Um, anyway, but, and then you can see them putting time and effort into things like Outlook with the new Outlook views inside of which is our Winter Twelve. Th- right. winter 13 um all right speaking of punching someone in the tender loins were we speaking about that <laughs> i didn't think we were actually on that this topic is just, just this yeah. just popped up and it's just such a strange thing i had to sort of talk about it which is it's on uh it's on business insider and it i saw this the other day maybe yesterday a ford executive says oracle sent him a letter trashing salesforce.com um so what's interesting is ford was a big on stage, Dreamforce this year, one of the customers things, you know, talking and so obviously made a big splash about being part of the Salesforce ecosystem. Oracle, huge competitor, and had their Oracle World two weeks after Dreamforce. So then, so this is an executive here at, at um, he's a media executive at Ford, and he gets a letter addressed to him from Oracle, basically with articles slamming Salesforce, with articles quoting um uh, Mark Benioff, and also showing uh, Salesforce outages, but from Oracle. So, like... Unsigned, correct? Unsigned. Now, it could have been a prank, and you know what? Uh, you know, pranks are pranks, and, you know, in this day and age, you can pretty much fake anything. Um, it does look like a real... It. He posted pictures, yeah. and it, I mean, it looks like the Oracle, um, what do they call that? When... Letterhead? Yeah, I mean, it's the letterhead. Stationary? On, it's the stationary. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm, I'm the businessman. Yeah, <laughs> stationary. Okay. Um, anyway, I, just kind of interesting. Now, I guess uh, PR says they're looking into it. Salesforce is not really responding about it in a day or two That's ago. That's the way to handle it. Yeah, Salesforce. This Salesforce is like much ado about nothing. Who cares? So I, they sent a letter. Yeah, but it, not they just a letter. Do. Like, you should buy our product and Salesforce isn't good, but like with articles slamming the competitor big deal really yeah that's sort of not marketing anymore that's sort of like there's, there's a difference between marketing and kind of like it almost feels like a like a like a it political feels like thing. a political yeah dirt you know like a um, um like a one of those dear american bad commercials right uh, like i i support blah 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 yeah because this guy doesn't pay his bills or right whatever uh, in a dawn before we elected <laughs> blah 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 things were good um this message is approved by but, jason atwood yes it uh, is. no i i actually don't really feel like there's anything wrong with this it might feel like some dirty tactics or unethical but i don't really find that this is all that it doesn't big show of a deal it seem a i don't think so sal- sure but if i'm salesforce i'm laughing at this i'm like yeah whatever we had them on the stage you're sending them stuff about us. Right. You're, like, reminding them that we exist. Thank you. I, I like that right above the article it has their uh, it has their stock prices, Oracle at 30 or 31 right now, and CRM at 152. Um, so, we're, by the way, we're not, we don't do a lot of stock analysis here, but, but CRM has been on a big trend, you know, since for the last five years or so. When I remember, it was, like, 30s. It's been on a big trend upwards. Um, some say maybe you'll expo- um more than it's worth, but uh, but anyway, it's been on a big trend and is you know sort of making headway. Just in case those who listen to this podcast don't know anything about Salesforce and, and trading, we we have no, we are not responsible for any trades that you were to make in the <laughs> stock market at all. Do we have a safe harbor statement for trading? Safe harbor. 
don't listen to us. Don't buy stuff that we, we tell you to buy. We used to work at that big financial institution, but we don't work no, there anymore. No, but we do know enough to say, don't, don't listen to us. <laughs> Speaking of not listening to us, let's get into some picks of the week. <laughs> I guarantee you, you should not listen to us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, again, so let's make uh, let's let's pick some things we want people to go buy. All that right. is not stock. Well, mine's not buy. Mine's well, free. Mine's a, mine is CRM stock. <laughs> My pick of the week? My cloud post. CRM stock. CRM stock. <laughs> buy it now. It's going to go up. Buy a trillion. <laughs> Find an employee. Buy some of their options. Make right. money now. Uh, so what is your pick of this week? My pick of the week is – it's kind of weird. I've been watching um, a lot of sports on TV, as always. <laughs> yes. Well, you are sitting here in your I'm Yankees. sitting here in my Yankees – Jersey, cause I I'm think going ha- to Game Five this evening. Yes, I was hoping to not go, but they couldn't pull it out last night. Right, so I'll be there. For tonight. those of you who don't know Justin, he is a, uh, a proponent of a lot of sports. He's a pretty much a New York based. Well, I guess 100 percent New York based fan, but you're a fan of almost all the sports except for hockey. Right, I don't. I don't care for hockey. Right, but every you basically have a sport or two going at any season. Every season, and uh, you know, while I know your high, which ones are more important than others. Um, this is that time of year when you're kind of in the middle of uh, quagmire of sports, going to like sporting events like three or four times yeah, a week, just not, constantly. Yeah. So, so anyway, ALDS game five tonight. Yes. So I've been watching a lot of you know sports on TV, and and you know with a lot of these games, you don't skip the commercials so much because you're just watching a real important game. And there's been this advertisement for this this app called Sports Yapper. Okay. Okay. And it's free. I like I've free. I've been using it on my iOS devices. Okay. And what it is, it's it's a little social media um, app for sports, specifically teams. Okay. So you pick your favorite teams. Okay. You can pick live games that are going on, and then you can just start yapping during the game. Are you yapping – from a social media? You're or you... yapping from either social media or inside this app as just like a yap oh. inside the app. So very much like – kind of like Into Now, that well, other pick into, of yours. Yeah. That love, you can – Where, where you, you're like, I'm watching this TV show. Right. You could be and watching you sports. you can start talking about it. Right. This is really just geared towards sporting events okay. and live sporting events because you're watching together with all these people. Right. Free uh, from Yap Media LLC. And you can get it in the App Store. I, I, I imagine it's there for Android, too. I, I always leave Android out when I pick mobile apps. That's just because I don't have an Android device. But I was watching um, – what was I watching? It is I was available. yapping away. It is available on Android. It is? Okay, okay good. I just looked that up for you. Thank you. Uh, I was yapping away during one of the most recent Yankee games. I think after the uh, Game 3, I was in there. Everyone was going nuts with the Raul Abanya stuff. And so, so that, that sounds like fun. But you can be – Do you, can you be yourself or can you be like Yankee fan 25? Um, I don't know. I'm myself. Okay. Well, you – well, <laughs> no, you're not because you actually have multiple Twitter I accounts. I do, actually. <laughs> I'm my other Twitter account. Your other other one or your other one? My sports one. Your sports one. Yeah. Okay. Well, the that's sports one shows who you are. Yes, All that's right. who I am. Okay. In, so in there, I logged in with Twitter okay. via that – Okay. That I won't mention here. <laughs> that you won't mention here. <laughs> because basically you don't post anything on it. It's very I, I very, leave very it a little free. dormant. It's a little dormant. All right. Well, that's cool. Sports Yapper available on your Google Android Play and on the App Store. Look at me being all nonpartisan. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, my pick of the week is not free, but it's not expensive. Uh, came about because, uh, as we've mentioned many, many times, um, <laughs> since we talk about iOS and Apple devices, uh, we are pretty much an Apple shop here. So when someone sends you an access database, you have a couple. You have a couple of choices. And since we do a lot of data integration, my choice is to tell them to export it to Excel. Well, oh, that's one way to go. That's and, my choice. And I was looking at it, sitting in this access database. I'm like, I wonder if there's a way that I can. Actually, it was sitting on my desktop, and I and I did some. I right clicked on it, and it said open with, and it said no, no available, and then it said search App Store. Whoa, that's slick. Whoa, crazy, crazy. And it said and it said search app store and then it, sh- it went search the app store for extension, whatever the extension is, and then came back with three or four. That's fantastic. It was pretty good. It was smart, good right? Good job, Apple. OS X. Apple. And so then yeah, I found a couple. 
there was one that was nineteen ninety five and one that was four ninety nine. I'm like, let me try that four ninety nine puppy, uh, just to see if it works. And basically, it's called MDB Explorer, and it allows you to open up a lot of different types of SQL or or databases. Just database things. files. Yeah, lots of different kinds, um, and export them or or view them. And then, because what I first did is I dragged it over to Parallels, another pick of the week, and opened it up in Access, not a pick of the week. And I was looking at it, and, and to be, it, they had the like screens on it, so you like you put oh, in data, the forms, the forms, and yeah. I was like trying to get to the data, and I was like, oh, I'm so confused. Yeah, I, I get very lost. I don't know access. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I just want to look at the data. So I got this thing and opened it up, and then was able to export it and put it into multiple. Um, just put it in Excel sheets with t- keys and stuff. Yep. That's fantastic. It was good. Five bucks. I'll be M- buying that one. MDB Explorer. I won't be buying it now. I'll be buying <laughs> it when, when I you need, need it. it. Yeah. And there was a bunch. <laughs> there might have even been a free one, but I went for the one that kind of. I said this is too good to be true. Nice. Uh, Four ninety nine. There was a there was a nineteen ninety nine version, a different one. But I was like, good on it for having M- that MDB yes. Explorer. Yeah. I mean, I will nice. I will double check. I didn't actually check this thing as I was. I was like, I remember that. Um, but yeah, very good. Four ninety nine. Yeah, MDB Explorer by Graham Soft Limited. Um, if you want the thing, so if you're searching for it, I'm trying to see if it has the. Uh, you know, what? it's always weird when you. Oh, yeah, it is four ninety nine now. It was originally nine ninety nine, um, but it does you know everything you want it to do? Uh, pretty, pretty, you know, get stuff out, pull stuff out. Probably do a whole bunch more since I just use it for like two seconds just to get something out of it. But uh, pretty cool. All right, well, that wraps up our show this week. Uh, we'll be back next week with, uh, I think we're going to be talking about Winter 13. Yeah, and, and Cloud Cloudforce, Force, New York. Cloudforce New York, which is coming up next week. Uh, until then, and as we always say, remember to go to uh, iTunes and subscribe to the podcast. We haven't seen any reviews. We, for all you out yeah, there. Yeah, seriously. Come on, people. I want some new reviews. So let's get us a new review on the Cloudforce. Those people who just got a... A <laughs> uh, little Apple device, maybe? We're, like, buying reviews? Come on, Yes. Guys. We, we need at least, well, half of those probably should have already put reviews. But anyway, we'd love to see some more reviews on the iTunes. Um, we'd also uh, love to follow us on the Twitter. Justin's at Just Edelstein. I'm at Jason M. Atwood. There's the companies at Arcus Inc. If you just want news of our posts and blog and cloud folks, we're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Arcus Inc., the likes just keep on growing. There's a good article. We could have talked about it. A good article about, like, what's the value, what's the monetary value of a like on Facebook? Like, is it? does it have any monetary value? Like, clicks, they used to, we've gotten to the point of what clicks mean. Right. But, like, what is the monetary value of a like? Someone huh. liking your page. Interesting. Because when you're spending money to grab people, because, you know, Facebook's always asking you to go to, like, pay money to get more likes. Yeah. So, like, if you're asking me to pay money to get something. Tell me I, what it's worth. Then I have to know what it's worth. And while I I think social media is great, and I think the social connection and the business is the social, you know, it's it's a way of of connecting with people. But I don't, you know, so far it's not like people don't walk up and say, "Hey, I like your I liked your page on Facebook. Let's you know, let's do a massive uh, integration project." Um, but that being said, we actually one of our podcast listener approached us about a project the other day, and that was awesome. Yes. So uh, that's that. That just happened. Shout out to him. Yeah, we're actually almost done with it. <laughs> I'll be talking to him on Monday. <laughs> you just got your project update. There's your status update. Bam on the podcast. <laughs> that just happened. Uh, we will not mention names. So, but that you know, so that shows that you know at least one of the channels working. Anyway, we're on Facebook.com/slash Arcus Inc. We're also on Google. We're on LinkedIn. I never mentioned LinkedIn, but we post all we're stuff. There. To, we, we post everything all goes stuff there. You can you like it. It shows up yeah. in your feed. All that kind of stuff. Um, all right, so till next week, we'll be back and talking about more awesome cloud-focused stuff. Enjoy those cloudy days. Mm-hmm.